Hey everyone, this is the last video in the series of drums mixing in PreSonus Studio One. If you missed any of the other videos, feel free to come back at your own convenience. The first video in the series, we added the gate plugin from PreSonus Studio One onto the drums just to clean those up a bit. Then we added some EQ to make sure that we carved out frequencies that might kind of get in the way of our drums mix. Then we added the compressor plugin. Specifically on the compressor, there are some settings that you need to make sure that you're utilizing, especially if you're relying on a lot of presets. Today's video, we get to have fun and throw some effects at the drums. Now these effects aren't necessarily gonna be like 70s and 80s drums where we're doing crazy stuff with it, but I do wanna add distortion and reverb. Now when you hear adding distortion on drums, there's kind of this response of, you think about guitar pedals. A lot of times with guitars, we're using distortion all over the place. This kind of distortion, specifically in PreSonus Studio One, might have been meant for guitars, but we're using it almost like tape saturation on the drums. When you add distortion to drums, you have the benefits of doing compression. You're able to tame some of the dynamics and some of the peaks that you have when it comes to drums, but you're able to add some girth because every time you're adding distortion, there's all these harmonics, these things that aren't as pure as just hitting a snare drum. It almost adds this fur or this fuzz to the sound of your drum. So we're gonna be showing you how to do that in PreSonus Studio One. So when we jump over and look at the screen, we have our drums bus. Now, I don't want to necessarily put these effects on my drums bus. I wanna set up a specific effects channel. And the first thing we wanna do is add reverb to our drums. Right click anywhere on a track. I wanna add an effects channel. This effects channel, I'm gonna call reverb. And on my reverb effects track, I'm gonna go up here where it has inserts. I'm gonna scroll down in my PreSonus folder. There's one called Room Reverb. Right now, if I hit spacebar, you're not gonna hear any of the reverb. That's because none of my tracks are being sent to this effects bus just yet. If I highlight all of my tracks and go down where it says sends on the mix tab, I click the plus button next to sends and I can send all of these tracks to my reverb. Now from my reverb, I wanna to output to my drums bus. So right here where it says main, if I click that and go to drums, now my reverb is being sent to the drums bus. If I hit S on the reverb channel, we should now just be listening to the reverb of my drum. So if I hit play, Obviously the default setting has a lot of fluttering and a lot of echo. You may or may not want to use that, but let's take a look at some of the presets they have here. Some of the ones you want to look for, I don't particularly use drum booth a lot. The drum booth is essentially going to sound like if you're in a small bedroom like this, you already have kind of that small room sound. Halls are going to be pretty good. A hall is going to sound a lot more immersive than something like a bedroom. A flat plate is good because there's not any marg there's no modulation on plate reverb. Plate reverb is essentially just adding a bunch of decay to your sound. That might be the one that we go with in this one. Medium club is also pretty good. You can check that one out. Recital hall is going to sound very ambient. Recital halls might be more for vocals, strings. You can use any reverb you like. It is totally subjective, but as we're looking through small studio, I remember that one not having much of an impact. Large tunnel, these can get pretty crazy. If you just take a listen to large tunnel. All right, there's a lot going on there. That sounds like a bazooka. We can show you, I'll show you how to tame some of that low end stuff because whenever you have kick drum or floor toms going into a reverb, the low end information can get quite boomy and very muddy, but I'll show you how to address that in just a second. Let's just go back to something like a factory hall and take a listen to that. Again, this is with the reverb setting soloed, okay? We're not gonna be listening to a soloed reverb track much in the future. But on my reverb track, I can actually add a Pro EQ plugin. And this, with this EQ plugin, I wanna roll off some of that low end. So I'm gonna click the little red dot so I have a low cut filter. I'm gonna move this EQ plugin so it goes before my reverb. So these drums, before they're getting sent straight to the reverb, I'm gonna lose as much of that low end as I'm comfortable with, just so we don't have the extra, extra buildup in the low end. Let's take a listen and I'll move the low cut around.
Nice, just some context. If I take that EQ plugin off, this is what it sounded like before. Lots of low end, here it is with the EQ. Now with the reverb effects track, I'm gonna unsolo it. So now we're listening to all of our drum tracks, the direct drum tracks, the drums bus, and the drum reverb setting. I wanna bring the reverb fader all the way down. I'm gonna hit play, and I'm gonna incrementally just bring up the reverb fader until I start to notice it's really, really apparent, okay? Because I don't want this to be the overall main sound that you're hearing, but I want it to sound like my drums are in a larger space than just this bedroom, so let's do that. Nice, I like around negative 16. It's gonna be different depending on whatever your setting is, but that trick of just turn the fader all the way down and then just almost close your eyes while you're holding the fader and bring it up until it sounds good to you. Around negative 16, I can definitely notice that it's there, but it's not dominating the track like it was before. Let's take one more listen to it with the reverb. Nice, if I go anywhere else with this reverb, I might turn it down even just a little bit more. There's one more effect that I wanna add to the drums and that is distortion. So I'm gonna add another effects channel. And on this one, I'll just call it tubes. I make sure it outputs to my drums bus and I'm going to add, uh, PreSonus will call this one the red light distortion or red light dist plugin. I use this one on drums quite a bit. It is going to sound very harsh, especially when you first load it. I need to make sure that my drums are being sent to it. So I'm going to select all of these, go to sends, and then select tubes. All right, so I'm gonna mute my reverb bus and I'm going to solo our tubes section, which is basically the distortion plugin on the drums. And let's take a listen. Especially with the toms and the kick drum, it sounds very cartoonish. It almost sounds like an Atari, but this is where we get to blending the track in with the original. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with the reverb channel. Just some things to note when you are using this distortion plugin, uh, I've got the drive. The drive is gonna be a more subtle distortion. It's just adding a little bit of grit. The distortion knob specifically is adding really thick over the top, almost like a hard, distortion setting. And then the high frequency and low frequency, basically these are these cut filters that are telling us how much of that frequency response is being affected by distortion. So I turned up the low frequency knob and what it actually did was cut off a lot of the low end that was making it sound extra boomy in the recording. With distortion, we typically don't wanna use a lot of distortion on low end material bass guitar, if you add a fuzz pedal, things like that. There are ones that are specifically made for bass guitar and drums and things like that, but when in doubt, roll off some of the low end or turn up the low frequency knob on this plugin and then mess around with the mix knob. Since I've got this all going through an effects channel or an effects track in Presonus Studio One, I can leave the mix knob at 100% and it's gonna sound just fine because effectively I'm doing my mix knob right now with my fader. So I'm gonna take this tubes fader all the way down, I'm gonna do the same thing before, I'm gonna let the drums play and I'm just gonna incrementally bring up the distortion so that I'm hearing it, it's affecting the drums but it's not overwhelming.
Nice, so I've got that set about negative 19 with the distortion, negative 16 with the reverb. Last thing I'm gonna do is just an overall fun, hyped up EQ on my drums bus. So if I click the plus button on the drums bus and I go to Pro EQ, now that everything's been quasi mixed, we've got reverb, distortion, EQ, all that kind of stuff. This is where we can add some excitement to the drum. So after you've processed things with distortion and compression, a lot of times you can lose a lot of the excitement that happens in the high end. So I'm gonna boost some highs and possibly some of that low fundamental as well. You take a listen, I'll hit play. Now, typically with drums, you're gonna be adding more instruments like bass, guitar, vocals, and all of that. And at some point in your mix, you're gonna to wanna to add a limiter plugin. I'll just go ahead and add one to my drums bus. Click the plus arrow, go down to PreSonus, and select limiter. The limiter plugin is really a safety, or what we're using it for, as a safety so that we're, none of those spikes are gonna cause us to clip our signal so that when we export this file, we're not clipping and it sounds nice and clean. So make sure you add a limiter at some point and make sure that you're not clipping. One thing I want you to hear before you leave is I'm going to mute these effects tracks. I'm gonna bypass all of the plugins that we've added. So here are my drums as they sounded without any processing, no mixing at all, except some fader moves. Let's take a listen. And here's what they sound like with the processing. Way more exciting. We got some crispy high end, some lows as well. Don't be afraid of those volume jumps as you're mixing. Just make sure that you're not clipping at any point and you can gain stage for that at any point. Thanks so much for watching these videos. If you missed any of the others, be sure to check out the playlist on drums mixing here on my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you the next one. Thanks for watching.